Good evening. Let's deal with the obvious elephant in the room. Our expressions and opinions of our faith influence what we think of war. Christians do engage in war. The early Christians believed believers understood peace as God's purpose for our lives and objected as a matter of conscience to participating in war. The Christian church in its early infancy found it unthinkable that one who would practice faith in the risen one who eschewed and knew no evil would willingly participate in killing under the auspices of war, especially given the fact that Christ himself did not violently overthrow the Roman government. You know, the, the disciples thought, okay, he's, he's, this is Christ, this is the Messiah. Uh, the purpose of the Messiah is to set us free from oppression, so surely you'll bring in tons of military and you will defeat this Roman government and we'll be done with this. And Christ then behave as they thought that he should behave. And so that, that, that was the beginning of a different sort of thinking, a way of peace. Most central to Christian just war reasoning is the message of peace as embodied in Jesus Christ, whom we regard as the Lamb of Peace. Military service, particularly pledging loyalty to the emperor in the early days of the Christian church was, res was resisted and, and, and seen as idolatry and thus many of the early believers refused to serve in the military. You have only to read uh, the writings of Tertullian uh, who wrote about the military chaplet to see that. Uh, the early Christians were pacifists in a particularly warring world and these Christians uh, from the very earliest of our history uh, have been concerned and we even today as is represented here in this room are concerned not only with war but also the requirements placed on those who enter military service. The goal of war for both the just war adherent and the pacifist is peace. One enters war ultimately for the peace of the land or at least that's what is said. Just war is based on the assumption that peace requires resistance to violence and because humanity often succumbs to evil, war may be necessary to restore peace and for the love of one's neighbor to defend their peace. War, according to Just War ad, uh, ad Advocates, is a necessary evil. Thus there are times when the Christian has a moral and a political responsibility to do war. Now, when we think of just war theology, very often we think of the Bishop of Hippo. I like to say as an African American, the Bishop from North Africa, Augustine, because people so often forget that. This is a, a man from Africa. And so I stand on that tradition. Augustine, Augustine, in response to the charge that the fall of the Roman Empire was because of Christian pacifism, responded uh, with some writings and an engaging formulation which we now call just war theory. During the 16th century, Thomas Aquinas and others would build upon his writings to add criteria for just behavior in war. So you had justification for war on the one hand, and then you had what is called just behavior for war. The elements of just war theory are, are these. First, there must be a just cause. That just cause can include self-defense, protection of the innocent, punishment for wrongdoing, threat of aggression, or restoring property. I found that intriguing, particularly since we as African Americans have been talking about uh, reparations for quite some time. The other element for just war a theory is right intention. One must have a right intent. The next is a legitimate authority. 
one doesn't just go and wage war unless one has the authority to do so. And in, 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 the, in the ideology of just war adherence, that means a sovereign government. One wonders what we are doing in Iraq because we're not fighting against the sovereign government, are we? Terrorists, are they political uh, or sovereign gov governments or sovereign authorities? The other, last resort, and then probability of success. The other portion of just war theory has to do with just behavior in war, which is just, at, just in below, which means that uh, not only the justification of war, but the warfare plans and the behavior in war is necessary to declare war as just. And the elements of just behavior in war include discrimination, which would be one does not deliberately aim at non-combatants. That's prohibited. The other is micro-proportionality, which means proportionate use of force. Another is male, mala in se, which means soldiers may not use weapons or methods that are evil in themselves. We think of the nuclear bombs in this, in this case. 